The Struvelpeter by Dr. Heinrich Hoffmann When the children have been good, that is, be it understood, good at mealtimes, good at play, good all night and good all day, they shall have the pretty things Merry Christmas always brings. Naughty, romping girls and boys tear their clothes and make noise, spoil their pinafores and frocks, and deserve no Christmas box, such as these shall now look at this pretty picture book. By the way, I don't recommend this book should be read by kids. Shock-headed Peter Just look at him! There he stands, with his nasty hair and hands. See, his nails are never cut. They are grimmed as black as sod. And the Sloven, I declare, never once has combed his hair. Anything to me is sweeter than to pee, shook-headed Peter. Cruel Frederick here is cruel Frederick, see, a horrid, wicked boy was he. He caught the flies, poor little things, and then tore off their tiny wings. He killed the birds and broke the chairs, and threw the kitten down the stairs. And, oh, far worse than all beside, he whipped his Mary till she cried. The throw was full, and faithful Trey came out to drink on sultry day. He wagged his tail and wet his lip, when cruel Fred snatched up a whip, and whipped poor Trey till he was sore, and kicked and whipped him more and more. At this God Trey grew very red, and growled and bit him till he bled. Then you should only have been by, to see how Fred did scream and cry. So Frederick had to go to bed, his leg was very sore and red. The doctor came and shook his head and made a very great to-do and gave him nasty physic too. But good dog Trey is happy now, he has no time to say bow wow. He sits himself in Frederick's chair and laughs to see the nigh things there. The soup he swallows sup by sup and eats the peas and puddings up. The dreadful story of Harriet and the matches. It almost makes me cry to tell what foolish Harriet befell. Mamma and nurse went out one day and left her all alone at play. Now on the table close at hand a box of matches chanced to stand. And kind mamma and nurse had told her that if she touched them, they would scold her. But Harriet said, oh, what a pity, for when they burn it is so pretty. They crackle so and spit and flame, mamma too often does the same. The pussycats heard this, and they began to hiss, and stretched their claws, and raised their paws. Mio, they said, Mio, Mio, you'll burn to death if you do so. But Harriet would not take advice. She lit a match, it was so nice. It crackled so, it burned so clear, exactly like the pictures here. She jumped for joy and ran about, and was too pleased to put it out. The pussy cat saw this, and said, Oh, naughty, naughty miss, and stretched their claws and raised their paws. Tis very, very wrong, you know. Meow, 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 meow. You will be burned if you do so. And see, oh, what dreadful thing. The fire has caught her apron string. The apron burns her arms, her hair. She burns all over everywhere. Then how the pussy cats did moo, what else poor pussies could they do? They screamed for help, twas all in vain. So then they said, we'll scream again, make haste, make haste, meow, meow. She'll burn to death, we told her so. So she was burned with all her clothes, and arms and hands and eyes and nose, till 
she had nothing more to lose except her little scarlet shoes, and nothing else but these was found among her ashes on the ground. And when the good cat sat beside the smoking ashes, how they cried, Meow, 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 what will mamma and nursey do? The tears ran down the cheeks so fast, they made a little pond at last. The Story of the Inky Boys As he had often done before, the woolly-headed black amour, one nice fine summer day went out to see the shops and walk about. And as he found it hot poor fellow, he took with him his green umbrella. Then Edward, little noisy wag, ran out and laughed and waved his flag, and William came in jacket trim and brought his wooden hoop with him, and Arthur too snatched up with toys and joined the other's naughty boys. So one and all set up a roar and laughed and hooted more and more, and kept on singing, only think, Oh, Blackie, you're as black as ink. Now tall Agrippa lived close by, so tall he almost touched the sky. He had a mighty inkstand too, in which a great goose feather grew. He called out in an angry tone, Boys, leave the blacker more alone. For if he tries with all his might, he cannot change from black to white. But ah, they did not mind a bit what great Agrippa said of it, but went on laughing as before and hooting at the blacker more. Then great Agrippa foam with rage, look at him on this very page. He sizes, Arthur sizes, Ned, take William by his little head, and they may scream and kick and call into the ink he dips them all, into the instant one, two, three, till they are black as black can be. Turn over now, and you shall see. See, there they are. And there they run. The blackamoor enjoys the fun. They have been made as black as crows, quite black all over, eyes and nose, and legs and arms and heads and toes and trousers, pinafores and toys. The silly little inky boys, because they set up such a roar and teased the harmless blackamoor. The story of the man that went out shooting. This is the man that shoots the hares, this is the coat he always wears. With game bag, powder horn and gun he's going out to have some fun. He finds it hard without a pair of spectacles to shoot the hare. The hare sits snug in leaves and grass and laughs to see the green man pass. Now as the sun grew very hot and he a heavy gun had got, he lay down underneath a tree and went to sleep, as you may see. And while he slept like any hop, the little hare came hop, 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 took gun and spectacles and then on her hind legs went off again. The green man wakes and sees her place, the spectacles upon her face, and now she's trying all she can to shoot the sleepy green coat man. He cries and screams and runs away, the hare runs after him all day, and hears him call out everywhere, Help! Fire! Help! The hare! The hare! At last he stumbles at the well, head over ears and in the fell. The hare stopped short, took aim and hark! Bang! went the gun. She missed the mark. The poor man's wife was drinking up the coffee in her coffee cup. The gun shot cup and saucer through. Oh dear, shall I cree, what shall I do? There lived close by the cottage there, the hare's own child, the little hare, and while she stood up on her toes, the coffee fell and burned her nose. Oh dear, she cried with spoon in hand, such fun I do not understand. The Story of Little Sucker Thumb one day Mamma said, Conrad, dear, I must go out and you leave here. But mind now, Conrad, what I say. Don't thuck your thumb while I'm away. The great tall tailor always comes to little boys who sucks their thumbs. And ere they dream, 
what he's about, he takes his great sharp scissors out and cuts their thumbs clean off, and then, you know, they never grow again. Mama had scarcely turned her back. The sun was up in a lack, a lack. The door flew open and he ran, the great long red-legged scissor man. Oh, children, see the tailors come, and caught out little suckatum. Snip, snap, snip, the scissors go, and Conrad cries out, oh, 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 snip, snap, snip. They got so fast that both his thumbs are off at last. Mama comes home, there Conrad stands, and looks quite sad and shows his hands. Ah, oh, Mama said, I knew he'd come to naughty little fucker sum. The story of Augustus, who would not have any soup. Augustus was a chubby lad, fat, ruddy cheeks Augustus had, and everybody saw with joy the plump and hearty healthy boy. He ate and drank as he was told, but never let his soup get cold. But one day, one cold winter day, he screamed, Oh, take the soup away! Oh, take the nasty soup away! I won't have any soup today! Next day now, look, the pictures show how lank and lean Augustus grow. Yet though he feels so weak and ill, the naughty fellow cries out still, Not any soup for me, I say! Oh, take the nasty soup away! I won't have any soup today! The third day comes, oh, what a sin, to make himself so pale and thin. Yet, when the soup is put on table, he screams as loud as he is able, Not any soup for me, I say, oh, take the nasty soup away, I won't have any soup today. Look at him, now the fourth day's come, he scarly weighs a sugar plum, he's like a little bit of thread, and on the fifth day he was dead. The Sorry of Fidgety Philip Let me see if Philip can be a little gentleman. Let me see if he is able to sit still for once at table. Thus Papa bade Philip behave, and Mama looked very grave. But fidgety Phil, he won't sit still. He wriggles, he giggles, and then I declare, swings back and forward and tilts up the chair. Just like any rocketing horse. Philip, I'm getting cross. Sees a naughty, restless child, growing still more rude and wild, till his chair falls over quiet. Philip screams with all his might catches at the cloth, but then that makes matters worse again. Down up on the ground they fall, glasses, plates, knives, forks and all. How Mama did fret and frown when she saw them tumbling down, and Papa made such a face. Phil is in sad disgrace. Where is Philip? Where is he? Fairly covered up, you see. Cloth and all are lying on him. He has pulled down all up on him. What a terrible to do. Dishes, glass have snapped in two. Here's a knife and there's a fork. Philip, this is a cruel walk. Table all so bare and ah, poor papa and poor mamma look quite cross and wonder how they shall have their dinner now. The story of Johnny had in air. As he trudged along to school, it was always Johnny's rule to be looking at the sky and the clouds that floated by. But what just before him lay in his way, Johnny never thought about, so that every one cried out, Look at little Johnny, the little Johnny had an air. Running just in Johnny's way came a little dog one day. Johnny's eye was still astray up on high in the sky, and he never heard them cry, Johnny, mind the dog is nigh! Bum dump! Down they fell with just a thump, dog and Johnny in a lump. Once, with head as high as ever, Johnny walked beside the river. Johnny watched the swallow trying, which was cleverest at flying. Oh, what fun! Johnny watched the bright round sun going in and coming out. This was all he thought about. 
so he strode on only thing to the river's very brink where the bank was high and steep and the water very deep and the fishes in a row stared at him coming so one step more all oh, sad to tell headlong in poor johnny fell and the fishes in dismay wagged their tails and swam away there lay johnny on his face with his nice red writing case but as they were passing by two strong men had heard him cry and with sticks these two strong men hooked poor johnny out again oh you should have seen him shiver when they pulled him from the river he was in a sorry ply dripping wet in such a fry wet all over everywhere clothes and arms and face and hair johnny never will forget what it is to be so wet and the fishes one two three are come back again to see up they came the moment after to enjoy the fun and laughter each popped out his little head and to tease poor johnny said silly little johnny look you have lost your writing book the story of flying robert when the rains came tumbling down in the country or the town all good little girls and boys stay at home and mind their toys robert thought no when it pours it is better out of doors rain it did and in a minute bob was in it here you see him silly fellow underneath his red umbrella what a wind oh how it whistled through the trees and flowers and sizzles it has caught his red umbrella now look at him silly fellow up he flies to the skies no one heard his screams and cries through the clouds a rude wind bore him and his head flew one before him soon they got to such a height that were nearly out of sight and the head went up so high that it nearly touched the sky no one ever yet could tell where they stopped or where they fell only this one thing in plain bob was never seen again thank you for your attention i hope i see you at the next video